بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ آل آف یو ول بی فائن اینڈ اینجوائنگ گڈ ہیلتھ بائی دی بلیسنگ آف آل مائی تھی آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد علی ہاشمی فرام یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن ایٹ اے کیمپس اینڈ آئی ایم ہیئر ود یو ٹو ٹیچ یو اباؤٹ ٹو ڈیز لیکچر دا سبجیکٹ از میکینزمز آف آرگینک ری ایکشنس اینڈ دا ٹاپک for today's lecture would be oxidation reactions involving replacement of hydrogen uh, with oxygen so uh, here are the main concepts we are going to learn in this uh, lecture in the previous uh, different lectures you would have learned about uh, basic uh, basics of organic chemistry and uh, aromatic substitution reactions and other such type of reactions currently uh, the topic is oxidation reactions and uh, specifically the oxidation reactions where uh, oxygen is replacing a hydrogen so here first of all we'll go through uh, a, a bit about the definition and concept of oxidation uh, what is oxidation and what is its basic concept and then we'll have a look at how oxidation operates in organic chemistry and then uh, the main topic is the reactions that involve replacing a hydrogen with oxygen so oxidation has many other different types but uh, we are specifically concerned with those reactions where a uh, hydrogen is gone from the reactants and an, an oxygen is uh, replacing it so for example a carbon is attached to a hydrogen uh, the hydrogen is removed and uh, carbon has a bond to oxygen in the product so those kind of reactions would be uh, the main topic of our discussion for this lecture so first of all uh, what are oxidation reduction reactions or uh, redox reactions if we look at it uh, by the perspective of an inorganic chemist um, we can say that redox reactions are comprised of two parts one is a reduced half and the other one is a an oxidized half so they always occur together i mean uh, oxidation and reduction is happening at the same time so what happens that in the reduced half Uh, the species uh, which are involved they gain electrons and uh, the oxidation number decreases so and for the oxidized half uh, the species which is involved that loses electrons and the oxidation number increases so this is uh, the basic concept um, for from an inorganic uh, perspective that uh, the the portion which gains electrons uh, that is uh, getting reduced and uh, the the reactants which are losing electron uh, their oxidation number is increasing and they are um, getting oxidized there are many simple ways to uh, to remember this uh, oxidation reduction reaction and uh, what happens in oxidation and what happens in reduction Uh, there are some mnemonic devices like uh, oil and rig if we uh, look at this it's it's very easy to remember uh, this uh, combination oil rig so here the um, oil is for oxidation is loss and reduction is gain that is rig and uh, in this way you can see that oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons so that is uh, just an easy way of remembering this uh, similarly there is uh, another way of uh, remembering it leo says jer so here uh, leo is for loss of electrons is equal to oxidation l e o loss of electrons is oxidation and jer gain of electrons is reduction so these are uh, different ways of remembering oxidation reduction uh, reactions um, you can you can uh, opt or adopt any one of these whatever you like or you can simply uh, 
remember it without using these mnemonic devices it's it's really up to you and it's your choice and uh, if you look there is no net change in the number of electrons in a redox reaction that is very important that uh, uh, some species are giving electrons the other one are uh, receiving or gaining those electrons um, the overall uh, reaction has no change in the number of electrons so the electrons given in the oxidation half are taken up by the uh, reduction half reaction so uh, you will not find any uh, net charge or change in the number of electrons in the whole reaction now we come to the uh, organic chemistry and uh, our topic so uh, the previously we just uh, had a quick look at how oxidation and reduction operates generally in chemistry and uh, in inorganic chemistry but in the organic chemistry oxidation can also be defined as um, uh, in these three ways so the first one is addition of oxygen so if there is addition of oxygen in any species that will be called as um, oxidation so that species which is gaining oxygen is getting oxidized the second is loss of hydrogen if uh, there is a species which is uh, losing hydrogen we can also say that it is getting oxidized so either it gains oxygen or it loses hydrogen that is the same in organic chemistry you can say that uh, the species is getting oxidized and the reaction is an oxidation reaction similarly addition of halogens is also uh, treated as an oxidation uh, reaction so if halogens are added to any uh, reactant it you you can say that the reactant is getting oxidized so you will use all these three different ways uh, in organic chemistry but uh, in today's uh, this lecture we are going to learn uh, the the oxidation where a hydrogen is replaced by oxygen so you can see that when hydrogen will be replaced hydrogen will be lost that will be oxidation and uh, it will be replaced by an oxygen so addition of oxygen that will be also um, uh, said as oxidation reaction so there are some commonly used oxidizing agents what is an oxidizing agent that actually um, derives or uh, controls the oxidation process so potassium permanganate KMnO4 that is a very widely used oxidizing agent uh, similarly we have chromic acid uh, you have studied about ozonolysis and those reactions where oxygen is added to the uh, alkenes so these are different uh, commonly used oxidizing agents and they have their own mechanisms of action which are used uh, as appropriate so they're, they're not universal or don't have uh, a similar mechanism or mode of action every uh, one of these have their own different mechanisms uh, which uh, are operating according to the conditions so uh, in oxidation reaction uh, you can see that electrons in an organic redox reaction often are transferred in the form of a hydride ion what is a hydride ion that is H negative H negative is called as a hydride ion so you can uh, say it as a combination that a hydride ion is a proton and two electrons what is a proton it is uh, a proton is uh, simply H positive and uh, mean it has no electrons so if there are two electrons uh, with it you add two electrons to that H positive it will become H negative and that will be called as a hydride ion so just uh, remember in in your mind that if uh, we say a proton and two electrons or we say a hydride ion you don't get confused and uh, you take the similar meaning so because they occur in conjunction with the transfer of a proton these are commonly referred to as hydrogenation and dehydrogenation reactions so you can say that uh, if a proton is added it will be called as a hydrogenation and if a proton is removed uh, it will be called as dehydrogenation reaction 
So, uh, and when a hydride ion adds up to a proton, H negative plus H positive, they release hydrogen molecule. So, uh, an H2 molecule is formed by the addition of a hydride and a proton or H positive. So, just be careful uh, to, uh, to remember that do not confuse the term hydrogenation and dehydrogenation with hydration and dehydration. These are two different processes. Hydrogenation and hydration, they don't have anything to do with them uh, with uh, themselves and they are two different entities. The later, that is the hydro hydration, it is the gain and loss of a water molecule and it is not a redox reaction. So, uh, the, the first one refers to the gain and loss of a hydrogen molecule. So, you can uh, uh, refer it to as oxidation and reduction. So, if it is a gain of a hydrogen, it will be a reduction uh, and if it is a loss of hydrogen, it will be oxidation. So, when a carbon atom in an organic compound loses a bond to a hydrogen and gains a new bond to a heteroatom. So, heteroatom may be oxygen or to another carbon or some other atom. We say that the compound has been dehydrogenated or oxidized. So, a hydrogen is lost and a new bond is formed. New bond is formed. It's not necessary that the new bond is formed to an oxygen atom. It is uh, bonded to a new hydroatom or any other carbon atom. Still, we can say that the, uh, the reaction is oxidation and uh, the compound has been oxidized because the uh, loss of hydrogen itself is called as oxidation as we have studied on the previous slides. So, a very common biochemical example is the oxidation of an alcohol to a ketone or aldehyde. So, this is a, a common naturally occurring uh, reaction where you can see that uh, dehydrogenation of an alcohol is happening. So, here is an alcohol. You can see this example. The carbon, uh, this is uh, attached to two different uh, R groups. They, they might be any group, alkyl chain or just hydrogen. So, uh, this is an alcohol where carbon has a hydrogen here and then oxygen has a hydrogen. So they are shown in different colors so you can just uh, understand how they, they are lost. So, in this reaction, uh, it, it, this hydrogen and this hydrogen, they both are lost as a H2 molecule and the resulting molecule is, an, uh, is a carbo carbonyl compound. It might be an aldehyde or a ketone. So, you can see that the carbon has lost a bond to hydrogen and gained two bonds to oxygen. So, carbon is oxidized uh, due to losing hydrogen and gaining of oxygen. So, what are oxidation states? Uh, if we compare the relative number of bonds of hydrogen atoms, we can order the familiar functional groups according to their oxidation states. Um, let's take a series of single carbon compounds with an, as an example. And uh, in this example, you can see that uh, methane, this is methane, the one on the far left. It has four hydrogen atoms attached to a carbon atom. It can be said as highly reduced because it does not have any bond to, to any oxygen. So, it is in the most reduced form. You, can, uh, you, you know that uh, the addition of hydrogen is reduction or loss of oxygen is also uh, reduction. So, methane does not have any oxygen attached to it. It has all the hydrogens attached. So, it is in the most reduced state. If you look next in the series, Next is methanol. This is methanol, CH3OH. So, it has one less carbon-hydrogen bond. So, this carbon-hydrogen bond is gone in methanol and now carbon has a bond to an oxygen atom. And uh, this can be said as an oxidized molecule. So, it is more oxidized than uh, the methane. And if you keep moving to the right side, you can see that uh, the next is formaldehyde where carbon has two bonds to oxygen atom. So, carbon has two bonds to oxygen, so it is more oxidized than 
methanol if you move to the right you can see that you have a uh, carboxylic acid and uh, this is formic acid where a carbon has one two and three three bonds to oxygen atoms so it is more oxidized than uh, the previous one and the last one is the carbon dioxide molecule which has four bonds to oxygen so here carbon has four bonds to oxygen and it is in the most oxidized state uh, compared to all these other compounds so this pattern also holds true for the relevant functional groups on organic molecules which have two or more carbon atoms so the previous ones uh, were just where we have one carbon atom now we move to the um, more than one carbon atom here you can see that this uh, alkane is in, in the most reduced form and uh, if you look at the alcohols or alkenes uh, they are uh, oxidized they're more oxidized than the ethane and then uh, comes the aldehydes ketones epoxides these all molecules are more oxidized than these previous ones and uh, the most oxidized one in this series would be uh, this uh, carboxylic acid which you can see at the end uh, it, it is acetic acid so when a carbon atom loses a bond to a hydrogen and gains a bond to a heteroatom it is considered to be an oxidative process because hydrogen of all the elements is the least electronegative so um, we have already discussed it that uh, if one carbon loses a hydrogen it uh, and gains a, a bond to any other atom it is not necessary that it is oxygen so that carbon will be said as, as to as uh, uh, oxidized and the process is an oxidative process so in the process of dehydrogenation the carbon atom undergoes an overall loss of electron density and you can see that hydrogen is the least electronegative atom and uh, uh, when a carbon loses that uh, uh, that hydrogen it has lost some um, electron density due to uh, the, that hydrogen atom with with the carbon so loss of electrons is called oxidation that is just a, another way of uh, uh, linking this process to the oxidation so um, as we already discussed that KMnO4 is a quite common uh, oxidizing agent in organic chemistry it is uh, uh, the most applicable oxidizing agent which is discussed in the organic chemistry teaching and organic chemistry textbooks so potassium permanganate is a very strong oxidizing agent and it is capable of oxidizing a wide range of organic molecules and usually it will oxidize organic compounds to appropriate carboxylic acids um, but the final product that can vary on the conditions used it's not a universal rule that whenever you use KMnO4 you always get a carboxylic acid the there might be variation uh, according to the conditions uh, used in that reaction but mostly it just does that uh, uh, it oxidizes a compound completely uh, up to the carboxylic acid let's move to the oxidation of alkanes alkanes can be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water via a free radical mechanism so uh, the the free radical mechanism you should have studied um, about the free radicals in basic organic chemistry um, where uh, the bonds are cleaved um, such that each atom has uh, one of its electrons so uh, the electrons don't just go to one atom but each cleaving atom uh, keeps one electron so that is why uh, it is called a radical species so uh, the energy released when an alkane is completely oxidized that is called the heat of combustion just uh, keep that in mind that uh, when uh, we oxidize an alkane we get a lot of energy and that is uh, the heat of combustion so for example when propane is oxidized the heat of combustion is 688 kilocalories per mole of the uh, propane you can see in this reaction um, that uh, this is an alkane and uh, we have three carbon atoms they um, two of them are attached to three hydrogens and one is attached to two hydrogens 
Um, I have colored these hydrogens in blue color, in blue just to show um, the relation of losing these uh, hydrogens. So these hydrogens are lost by these carbons and now these three carbons they are attached to oxygen atoms. So that means that uh, the main theme of our today's lecture um, that uh, carbon atom loses a bond to a hydrogen uh, and gains a bond to oxygen it means the hydrogen is replaced by oxygen. So you can see that uh, these carbons have uh, got oxygen atoms with them and their hydrogens are replaced. So uh, these hydrogens are removed as water molecules and uh, you get energy from this reaction, extra energy. So this is an oxidation process uh, where uh, you can see that uh, hydrogen is re being replaced by the oxygen. Next is the oxidation of alkenes. Alkenes can easily be oxidized by potassium permanganate and uh, some other oxidizing agents. So what are the products formed that really depends on the reaction conditions. It's not a general um, rule that there will be a specific product form. So uh, there is a rule that at cold temperatures and with low concentration of oxidizing reagent, alkenes tend to form glycols. Just keep in mind this low concentration of oxidizing agent and cold temperature. So if these will be the conditions, uh, an alkene will be converted to a glycol. You can see the reaction at the bottom that this ethene molecule reacts when it reacts with 1 to 4 percent potassium permanganate in the cold conditions. Uh, you get ethylene glycol. Glycol is uh, a, a kind of alcohol where you have two uh, adjacent OH groups onto carbon atoms. Uh, so under these conditions alkenes uh, will be converted to glycols. Uh, this is simply an addition. You can see that uh, the hydrogen is not replaced by an oxygen. Rather, this double bond is broken and uh, OH groups are um, added uh, on the carbons in place of the double bond. What if you use the uh, KMnO4 solution as a concentrated solution and uh, a bit higher temperature? If you provide this reaction heat, and uh, you use uh, a concentrated uh, uh, solution of potassium permanganate, uh, you do not get the glycol and uh, the glycol because the glycol is uh, further oxidized and, and you get the final products as um, carbonyl compounds. So you can see that in this reaction, uh, here is a hydrogen which uh, is replaced by an oxygen here. Uh, so that's why I colored it blue to make it easy to understand. So this portion CA3, CA3 and this carbon, it breaks from here. It is attached to an oxygen and you get an acetone molecule. While this portion, the right side one, you see that this CA3 is here and this, this carbon is right here. It has to bond to oxygen. And this hydrogen is replaced by an OH group. So hydrogen, uh, carbon hydrogen bond is replaced with a carbon oxygen bond. That is, um, uh, oxidation is definitely happening, but uh, these are different conditions that uh, under cold conditions you get glycols and uh, if you provide heat and um, you concentrate the solution of KMnO4, you get uh, carbon compounds, LDIs or ketones and uh, carboxylic acids. Uh, you get as a mixture. So uh, there is a great number of oxidizing agents that can uh, affect the oxidation of an alcohol to a carbonyl compound. Uh, you can see this general reaction that uh, this number one uh, is uh, an alcohol. When you oxidize it, you get a carbonyl compound. So R1 and R2 can be different species. They can be hydrogens, they can be um, alkyl groups. So uh, a synthetic chemist uh, has a, a lot of choice of methods for this reaction. We will see with what are different uh, conditions uh, to carry out these reactions. So the susceptibility of aldehydes, uh, if you look at number two here, this is an aldehyde when R1 is equal to H and R2 is an alkyl or aryl group. So the susceptibility of these LDIs to further oxidation that narrows down the choice of reagents for the oxidation of primary alcohols to the carbonyl 
level in a good yield. What does that mean? That means if we want to oxidize an alcohol to an aldehyde, we do not want to go it to the uh, carboxylic acid stage, then we our choice of uh, reagents uh, that gets narrowed down. We uh, because common oxidizing agent will completely oxidize the alcohol to the carboxylic acid. And uh, the if an alcohol group is a part of a complex molecule that is sensitive to acidic or basic reagent, then the choice of effective oxidants is narrowed still further. So if you your molecule has some such sensitive groups, then you have to uh, use the oxidizing agents which are um, uh, which do not disturb those parts of the molecule um, and, uh, and do the oxidation where do you where you want it. The, and the discovery of oxidants that are able to achieve the alcohol to carbonyl conversion in high yield in a variety of substrate that has been a very important to the development of the senses of complex natural products. So in the developing the senses of natural products, it, it is a very common and uh, it's uh, an important reaction that you uh, oxidize an alcohol to a carbonyl compound. So there, there are catalysts which also dehydrogenate alcohol. So catalytic dehydrogenation of alcohol is especially suited to the large scale production of the simpler carbonyl compounds and has been used for example for the preparation of formaldehyde, acetaldehyde, acetone and tubitinone on an industrial scale. You will see on the next slide that uh, these are different reactions which are employed on the industrial scale um, on catalytic dehydrogenation primary alcohols uh, they give aldehydes so if you use a catalyst uh, copper metal in this case you get uh, from primary alcohol you get an aldehyde if you have a secondary alcohol you get a ketone and if you have a tertiary alcohol you get an alkene instead of a carbonyl compound So next is the oxidation of alkyl benzenes uh, by potassium permanganate. Potassium permanganate oxidizes alkane carbon atoms which contain sufficiently weak CH bonds such as those in benzylic positions. So uh, the, the carbon atoms which are in benzylic position they are attached to a, a phenyl ring. They, uh, you know that uh, the electron density of uh, carbon is uh, more attracted to the ring and carbon in turn attracts the electron density of hydrogen because hydrogen is less electronegative than carbon. So CH bond is a weak bond in these cases and uh, it can be easily oxidized by potassium permanganate. And the oxidizable alkyl benzene substituents can be uh, methyl or any uh, primary alkyl group such as uh, ethyl or it can be secondary alkyl groups such as this one. All of those will be oxidized to carboxylic acid group. Um, oh. So we move to the next slide. Here you see uh, that you have an alkyl benzene. So this carbon has two groups R1 and R2. So these R1 and R2 can be uh, different groups. Uh, R1 might be equal to R2 which can be hydrogen. These both can be hydrogen. So it means that this uh, carbon can be a CH3 or uh, it R1 may be an alkyl group and R2 might be a hydrogen so that will be a primary um, primary carbon atom and uh, it might be that both R's are alkyl groups so that will be a secondary carbon atom in that case in all these cases you will get a C double bond C double OH group a carboxylic group uh, in place of these both uh, R groups. So, um, for example, if you look at this example, if you have more than one alkyl groups on these position, you will get um, all uh, those uh, alkyl groups converted to the carboxylic groups. So, this is a, a beauty of this uh, reaction that uh, all the other groups are lost and you always get a carboxylic group at the benzylic position. So uh, these reactions will produce these uh, products. It is also important to note that when the benzylic carbon is a tertiary carbon atom, if you have a carbon which has three different alkyl groups attached to it, means it has no replaceable hydrogen. Um, in these uh, example, the oxidation through KMnO4 does not happen. So you should have 
uh, one at least one hydrogen attached to this carbon which can be uh, replaced by the oxygen if uh, this carbon is a tertiary carbon it has no hydrogen the reaction will not happen so um, we move to the mechanism of this uh, reaction how this reaction uh, the oxidation of alkyl benzene happens um, its mechanism is uh, quite complex um, and uh, because manganese behaves uh, mysteriously in these reactions it, the mechanism is not still very clear but uh, the most uh, we can understand different steps uh, uh, proposed by the scientist as the most vigorous oxidant is the permanganyl ion. The MnO3 positive ion is uh, used as a, an oxidant in this reaction. Um, and if you see that uh, MnO4 reacts with the acid, you always use acidic or alkaline MnO4. When it uses um, the acid, uh, it is converted to the this uh, permanganyl ion, MnO3 positive, and this is the fast reaction, fast step. And uh, then that ion reacts with your compound and creates a free radical. Uh, we move to the next slide to see this, how it is happening. So you see that uh, this hydrogen and this oxygen bond, they uh, react as a free radical. And uh, this hydrogen uh, is shifted to this oxygen. And you see that uh, this carbon now has one electron. Uh, which is left from this bond. So hydrogen has taken its electron and a free radical is generated here. So in the next step, this oxygen, the second oxygen on the manganese that uh, does a free radical reaction and gets attached here. And uh, then it uh, it can, its uh, mechanism, how it detaches, that is not very well understood, but uh, uh, this detaches by leaving this oxygen atom at this carbon so that uh, in that way the oxidation mechanism proceeds so free radical mechanisms are uh, they are different and difficult than the common organic uh, common sense organic mechanisms because they can proceed in many different ways and uh, controlling a free radical reaction is also a hard task so uh, interestingly any alkyl group is oxidized back to a, carbonyl, a carboxyl group as uh, we have discussed on the previous slide. Um, so for example if you, even if you use propyl benzene you, you have three carbon atoms on the benzene ring you still get the uh, benzoic acid you get the C double OH group and all the other carbon atoms are lost in, the, in this reaction. So here are different substrates. If you use uh, a toluene molecule, you get benzoic acid. If you use propyl benzene, you still get benzoic acid. Uh, and if you use such a substrate where uh, there are two different alkyl groups directly attached to the benzene ring, then you will break this molecule from here and uh, the resultant uh, the product will contain two carboxyl groups. Uh, due to two uh, direct attachments of uh, alkyl groups to the benzene ring. And if you have a tertiary alkyl group on the benzene ring, the reaction does not proceed. KMnO4 cannot oxidize it. Yeah, so that was uh, uh, all about these uh, uh, reactions where a hydrogen is replaced by an oxygen atom. Um, you can uh, uh, you can go through the the books given in the references section and uh, you can study more if you want and I have an assignment for you. Um, you you have seen that it is observed that benzene does not get oxidized by KMnO4 uh, benzene mean simple benzene uh, without any alkyl group and uh, it does not discharge the pink color of KMnO4 uh, uh, on the other hand if you use an alkyl benzene that reacts with KMnO4 and uh, discharges its color why is that so? Why benzene does not react with KMnO4 but alkyl benzene does? So you have to look for its answer and justify it with a reason. And similarly you have um, one or two other questions. You have to choose a suitable reagent to carry out this reaction. Which reagent would you use to carry out this reaction? Similarly, um, there are three different uh, reactions to achieve this compound which ones of the, uh, these three pathways is correct you have different options you have to choose the correct option and uh, uh, see why 
why is that so if if some option is correct why is that and why the other one is not correct you have to look for these answers and here are the references uh, which were consulted during the preparation of this lecture if you have any question or uh, any um, thing that is not uh, clear you can ask your teacher in the classroom and uh, i'll see you inshallah in the next lecture so i wish you best of luck and allah hafiz